Well, it's prior to World War I, of course, because what, what Australia now essentially has a Pacific perspective, right? It started over the last decade or so to swing back to uh, a title of which an Australian, Australian ministers are enormously proud, the idea of the Indo-Pacific as the way in which you describe the hitherto Asia-Pacific zone. But it gives a maritime perspective to it and it locks up into the, uh, the um, uh, western side uh, of the Indian Ocean and, and incorporates that within the zone of our, of our principal interests. But it, it, the, log the, the, the obvious uh, grounding of the whole proposition was in the character of the British Empire, to be frank. The, con the, the contact with Britain occurred across the Indian Ocean. The focus of Australia was on various Indian Ocean countries. So Australian staff officers, for example, uh, who were headed for generalship uh, back in the 20s and 30s, there was no Australian staff college. Uh, they all went to Quetta. Um, you have uh, the, um, earlier than that, in World War I and earlier, the British Indian Army was um, dependent in their cavalry units on the supply of horses from New South Wales. Uh, but that all went across to British uh, Indian Army, uh, uh, Army units. And of course, there's just the whole dependence we had in the, the era of uh, essentially um, uh, British Empire trade and trading arrangements. We were locked into uh, the, the British market and the, the transit of the Indian Ocean was the, the basis on which Australia was settled and the basis on which Australia traded and the basis on which Australia was defended. So, um, you know, the first big naval battles in the Indian Ocean, that's the sinking of, uh, uh, by the Sydney of a German raider Emden. Oh, they're just, you can go through um, all the history of World War I and it fundamentally is all about, um, in its maritime dimension, the linkages between us, the Mediterranean, the Atlantic for uh, the purposes of deployment of our troops and of fighting too. Um, and, uh, and that is, so in the era when we were steeped in imperial consciousness, um, that was the, the map, the strategic map. And I can remember as a boy, because we were in a transitionary period then, we were moving from, um, had been moved a long way by the Americans in, the, in our uh, requirement for their support and our collaboration with them in the struggle with the Japanese, which is essentially, uh, though there are many Indian Ocean attributes to it, it was essentially a Pacific struggle, a South Pacific struggle to start with and then through the islands. So, uh, but after the war, it's quite interesting, um, even though John Curtin had made the speech that he made, about um, turning without uh, regret to the United States and uh, uh, at the outset. During the war, as we came towards the end of it, his focus on Britain was revived. And uh, though we had an American arm, an American dimension to the way policy was developing, very Pacific in its, its intent, and then we had a, a, a look over to Britain uh, and an attempt to revive that. So, so while we're negotiating ANZUS, we're also doing so many things in, in collaboration with the British in Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Uh, not necessarily, I have to say, in all honesty, uh, things that in the long-term historical uh, arc spoke well of us. So, for example, Menzies was very much a fall guy uh, for Eden in uh, discussions with NASA on the Suez Canal. Um, but uh, Menzies was humiliated, to be frank, uh, and, uh, and it was part of the fact that he was far more comfortable looking across the Indian Ocean than he was looking across the Pacific. And, um, but therefore, you know, the, the points of connection with Britain were absolutely critical to him. 
and um, he's a maritime man in a maritime mind, so uh, the Indian Ocean in that regard was, uh, was the point of contact, the connection, and the fastest way through the Indian Ocean to Britain, of course, through the Suez Canal. So you have all these, these facets um, continuing in Australian political consciousness, but gradually dimming. Um, and then uh, as the immense importance of the relationship with the United States starts to subsume uh, much of our defence thinking uh, and our strategic thinking. Even then, it stays there. Um, the, uh, there's a resurgence of uh, after Vietnam in which a lot of folk felt uh, burned by uh, what they considered a strategic policy error by the United States. But then what happens immediately after that, or in the transition phase to immediately after that, there's the perception of Soviet and American naval competition in the Indian Ocean. So, and indeed an Australian foreign minister loses his seat on it because he see, appeared indifferent to an expansion of Soviet naval power in the Indian Ocean and he was pilloried uh, by the Democratic Labor Party who directed preferences against him, Gordon Freeth, and he lost his seat. So, again, the Indian Ocean, um, while it's, it, 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 it's secondary, it still is, uh, is of importance and perhaps increasing significance. Northwest Cape, uh, the American installation at Northwest Cape, of course, on the Indian Ocean, um, demonstrated the Indian Ocean actually had a relevance uh, to United States policy as well. What Northwest Cape was initially seen as doing was supporting uh, the deployment of American ballistic missile submarines in the Indian Ocean with an interesting angle of attack on these, the Soviet missile sites in the, the central parts of the Soviet Union. That disappears quite rapidly, actually, as American missile ranges get much, much longer and the Indian Ocean is no longer a, a, a locus of ballistic missile deployments. But American submarines remain. And the Americans cement themselves um, more firmly in the region with Diego Garcia and uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a sort of um, way station for supporting operations, essentially in the Middle East. Uh, and that's just got more and more important to the Americans and the Indian Ocean as a point of transit for American operations into the uh, Persian Gulf and the Arabian Sea is um, a, uh, it's now a critical area and has been for a long time now a critical area of deployment for the Americans and for ourselves, of course. So, but it has to be said uh, that as a deliberate conscious act of uh, ensuring that Australian policy has its Indian Ocean perspective. It is not something that necessarily comes automatically, even if it is understood automatically. It actually rely, requires, from time to time, a deliberate determination and thought. Well, we did that with the Two Ocean Navy. Less significantly, but more recently, both uh, recent Labor governments and Liberal governments have got themselves actively engaged in Indian Ocean regional organisation. That's not necessarily military organisation, though some agreements to, to do things with, with the, uh, uh, the Indians and uh, others in the, that, the subcontinental area. Um, that's uh, very much uh, incorporating within the the logic of Australian diplomacy and of Australian military deployments, the two ocean navy con uh, concept. Once you went to that concept, then you start to take note of the things that you could, uh, you could do in that regard. And then finally, uh, and this, this is something where we need, to, we need to drive this more into Australian strategic consciousness than we do. Uh, the, 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 the point of the if you like, the ingress and egress between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific is the Indonesian archipelago. And uh, that archipelago is the, are the choke points in it. 
as points of entry into Australian waters in a military context, we actually have to be able to not dominate, but deny uh, those uh, areas to a, um, a would-be uh, uh, threatener uh, of Australian security. And that needs to increasingly dominate the prioritisation of the force structure of our defence forces. Uh, and I think it will over time. I, I think perhaps the administration of Donald Trump has hastened the consciousness of our strategic environment and what we need to do about it.